Good morning and welcome. Thank you so much. I love to come early and get a little music and dance a little bit. Sometimes. So my name is Lester Stu Hardy and I want to welcome you to Unity Myrtle Beach, whether you are here in person. It was such a beautiful day. I'm so glad that you showed up or you're live on Facebook now, later, YouTube later, we welcome you, and we are very thankful for you. I'm gonna go ahead and um, I wanna say a little prayer. I was looking up something the other day for Thanksgiving because, you know, it is Thanksgiving weekend. Um, I had y'all all survive. <laughs> but I, as I was, Thinking about Thanksgiving the other day, I found this prayer, and it's just a very simple prayer, so I want to read it to you. And the name of it is In One Family. Send thy peace, O Lord, which is perfect and everlasting, that our souls may radiate peace. Send thy peace, O Lord, that we may think, act, and speak harmoniously. Send thy peace, O Lord, that we may be contented and thankful for thy bountiful gifts. Oh, nice. And we say amen. 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 Let's go ahead and go into our first song, Do All You Can. And you know, you're welcome to stand and dance. <laughs> Indeed, Bobby.
Wow. <laughs> you know, I went to a concert uh, a week or so ago, and they had 13 members in their band, and we've got <laughs> nine. <laughs> nine. <laughs> hey. I was impressed with that, but I'm more impressed with this on a Sunday morning. Right. Thank you so much. I love that song. So, I welcomed you earlier, but I want to say again how how glad that I am that you are here today and welcome. Do we have any first-time visitors? I forgot to ask that earlier. I was looking around at everybody and everybody looked familiar. I'm, I'm, I'm new. <laughs> it's a new day. I'm it's new. a new day, that's right. Well, thank you all for being here. You uh, truly, it is a it is an honor for you to be here with us today. You make Unity Myrtle Beach Unity Myrtle Beach. Yes, and without you, there, you go. there wouldn't be more Unity Myrtle <laughs> Beach. So just as a little reminder, and they have them in yellow. So that or you can, white. There's also oh, varying colors. Okay. <laughs> so we have these sheets in the back on that table, and they have two prayers on them. We're going to go and we're going to say the first one. The first one is the prayer of Jesus, translated from the Aramaic. That's on one side. And then later in the service, it is the updated prayer of unity that we'll be saying. And if you would like to say this with me, you are more than welcome to do this. I speak slow. Father, mother, birther, and breath of all, Create a space inside of us and fill it with your presence. Let oneness now prevail. Your one desire then flows through ours as energy fills all form. Give us this day our physical and spiritual nourishment and untangle the knots of error that bind us as we release others. Do not let appearances make us forgetful of the source but free us to act appropriately from age to age. Through you flow the glorious harmonies of life. May these words be fertile statements through which our future grows. Amen, amen, and amen. You know, today is the first day of Advent, and it's the last day of November. I cannot believe. I don't know where this year is going. Somewhere behind us. <laughs> Whoops. So I'm going to read to you our daily word. And the daily word, of course, is hope, which is, well, they say hope and faith because some people use both words in reference to the first day of Advent. This Advent, my hope leads me to unwavering faith in God. That is the affirmation. Would you like to say that? You want me to say it again? Yes. This Advent, my hope leads me to unwavering faith in God. Let's say that again. This Advent, my hope leads me to unwavering faith in God. My belief in goodness of the world, others, myself, and God begins with hope. Maybe hope is all that I can muster after a period of, dis of doubt or disappointment. As I feel hopeful, I begin to believe that new possibilities and better outcomes are available to me. My hopeful feelings lead to faith, a certainty that the goodness I could only sense before is the actual nature of life. With faith, I now direct my thoughts toward goodness, wholeness, and my heart's desire. Desires. With gratitude for my awakening, I use faith to dismantle doubt and limitation. I hold only the best thoughts for myself. Now talk about an affirmation. I hold only my the best thoughts for my 
of self. I know and feel in the depths of my soul that the good I desire is already mine. With unwavering faith and deep gratitude, I claim it now. Wow, that was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> we'll keep that one. <laughs> so, from Psalm 62.5, For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. Okay. Without further ado, we're going to go into our next song, One Creation. But let me say this before that, because I'm going to leave. I'm going to step down. Our prayer meditation is with our lovely Reverend Margaret, whom we all love. And her message today is the journey of faith. Now I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. One Creation by Acoustic Junction. the Sunday after Thanksgiving, a Sunday where people might want to sleep in and 
like bears in hibernation. <laughs> so thank you, band. And thank you, everybody, for coming together so that we could share in one mind and one accord this incredible energy known by many names and unity. We call it unity. Oneness, peace, love, hope, faith. So before we go into our meditation this morning, I'd like to invite us to ponder a few ideas. That's one of my favorite words, to ponder. And I was thinking this Thanksgiving, you know, growing up around our dinner table and maybe around yours too, the question was often, who wants to say the prayer? But the other way the question was posed was, who wants to say grace? grace? And for some reason, after being on the planet for almost 73 years, it occurred to me to ponder on that idea this Thanksgiving. Because what we speak into the world is helping to generate and create our experience that unfolds before us. So what if we were more aware of saying grace over an event, a person, situation, just holding in our consciousness, I speak grace into this event, into this moment. That's a powerful idea, and better late than never for me, you know, to really let myself deepen into this idea of what it is to say grace over a thing, over an event, over a person. So... Let's ponder these ideas. Advent means the arrival of a notable person or a notable event. Uh, it means the arrival of a notable thing. And today, our first Sunday of Advent is about hope and faith. What if it's on the calendar for our species to welcome a greater depth of hope and faith into our minds and hearts and into the world right now? What if that's on the timetable? What if there is a spiritual order of events and that at this time there would be the arrival of even greater hope, even more expanded faith? What is it? That's arriving. Could it be that we as a species are arriving more powerfully to ourselves? To the light that we are? Could it be? It's an idea to ponder. You know, Mary was asked to ponder this idea in her heart. The idea of bringing into the world a consciousness that we would come to know as the consciousness of Christ, the consciousness of love. And she was asked to ponder this idea, just like we are. We're, whenever we're guided or inspired or pulled to work with spirit in a new way, with a new idea, maybe something we've never done before, and we might... Uh, resist a bit. We're asked to ponder, what will it mean for you to say yes to the arrival of a greater expression of your light? What will that mean? As we go into meditation, I want us to think about this, that before Mary was asked to ponder the idea of birthing this consciousness into the world, her cousin got the call first. They're on the same Verizon plan. They <laughs> she got the call first. Apparently, the call was to Zacharias and Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, and the call was as there was going to be a child that would precede the child Jesus. And here is the hitch. Elizabeth was way beyond childbearing years. 
And her husband, Zacharias, said, you've got to be kidding. There's just no way that's going to happen. So Elizabeth held this in her heart because Zacharias at that point was no help. <laughs> she held it in her consciousness. What if it's true that even when it looks like we are beyond receiving divine inspiration from on high, when it looks like we're beyond the years of growing, birthing, developing the Christ into the world, even when it looks like we're pretty much done and at the end of our race, the angel of inspiration comes along and says, here's the deal. This is going to be birthed through you. So ponder this. It's going to happen. So today, I want us to think about this. Faith is the substance or conviction of things that we've hoped for. Faith is the evidence of things that aren't yet fully seen. So if we think about our species deepening into faith and hope at this time in our evolution, we are thinking and believing and pondering in the invisible. It's not yet fully seen. So I'm going to light the first candle of the Advent wreath. And this candle is for our hope and our faith. And as I light the candle, I know that we're lighting it for each one of us here and all that we're holding in our heart. Quantum physics, it goes on and on and on. So as we take a deep breath, deep, healing, conscious breath. We ponder this idea that we light the candle for hope and faith, literally lighting the candle. And this represents lighting the flame of hope and faith within our hearts. What is arriving for you this Advent, the arrival of something notable? What is expanded hope and faith taking us to? What is becoming clear in our consciousness? What are we releasing in order to have expanded hope and faith? What do I need to release to expand my hope and faith? What wisdom and insights are deepening in our consciousness? As we take another deep healing breath, I invite us to hold our world in a consciousness of grace. Unearned grace. Imagining the energy of grace flowing through and around and upon our species, our planet. We 
say grace over our world, our species, all life, our planet, our rivers and oceans, the soil, the air. We speak grace into the world. We call forth hope, and we call forth faith. We call forth the conviction that all things are unfolding for our highest good. We speak grace over ourselves, and all that we're holding in our hearts. Every Sunday we say, let there be peace. And today we say, let there be hope. Let there be faith. Let there be grace. And let it begin with each one of us. Take another deep breath. We continue to ponder these ideas in our hearts and in our minds as the birthing of hope and faith expands in us. And we say, so it is, and so we let it be. Namaste. Namaste. So our Advent wreath came from the beautiful cedars back here in the corner of our property. And it was such a great discovery because some of our cedars out front have been, uh, have been um, a little bit under the weather the past few years, turning brown, but they're starting to green up more and more and more. These back here evidently are way happier <laughs> but how wonderful to have our Advent wreath made from the gifts of this land this year. Mm. Yeah. And I was able to get to those cedars because John and Gervais cleared out the bushes back here. Isn't that great? Yeah. Thank you for all the hard work that's been going on out here. So faith and hope. I want to share with you what Charles Fillmore said about faith. Is that a good idea? Because it's one of the 12 powers, you know, that he taught about. So if Charles were here this morning, he might say these words to us because these are his words. He said regarding faith, it is quite possible to possess a reality that cannot be seen. I've got one absolutely. Anybody else? Want to raise the absolutely? Oh, okay. It is quite possible to possess a reality that cannot be seen, that cannot be touched, it cannot be comprehended by any of the outer senses. Sight, hearing, smell, touch, taste. It's beyond those. It's metaphysical. It's beyond the physical. So, it is possible to possess a reality that cannot be seen. It is faith when we are fully conscious of things not seen. And it is faith when we have the assurance of things that are not yet manifest. It's kind of what we're doing out here at Salem Road. <laughs> In other words, Fillmore said, faith is that consciousness in us of the reality of the invisible substance and of the attributes of our own minds where we can understand it. We must realize that the mind makes real things. Sometimes we say, oh, it's just a thought. Have you ever said that? It's just a thought. Or it's, it's, it's just an idea, an idea I have. 
Sometimes we say it so lightly, not remembering that these thoughts and ideas are the eternal realities from which we build our life and our world. That's from Brother Fillmore. So now I'm going to segue into how we're building our life and our world with these thoughts that Fillmore talked about. And it's a good question to ask ourselves now and then. These thoughts that I'm building my world with, are they hopeful thoughts? Am I building my world with faithful thoughts? See, we've been looking at the four agreements, and there's my segue. <laughs> we've been looking at the four agreements in Sunday services and also at the Wednesday uh, Unity Book Group. And in this book, you know, it's not a religion. It's based on ancient Toltec wisdom. And in this, uh, these ideas of the four agreements, the idea is if we practice these four agreements, just like if we practice Unity's five principles, or any principles that are about love and hope and forgiveness and compassion in the world, it takes us to knowing ourselves and who we really are as pure love and pure light. That's the whole reason for the practice. If I'm a good Hindu, it's going to take me to knowing myself as pure love and pure light. If I'm a practicing, really, a practicing Christian and the principles, the teachings of the Christ, it takes me to knowing myself as pure love and pure light. Same with Buddhism. Same with any spiritual path. The point is to know ourselves as the light. In this book, The Toltec Wisdom, the idea is to transform hell into heaven. Same idea with Unity teaching that heaven and hell are states of consciousness, and it's our personal work that creates the hell or the heaven. That's, that's one of the biggest... That's one of the biggest hallmarks of unity. We took ourselves out of hell. And we took ourselves out of the idea that anyone was going to send us there. We took ourselves into the divine idea that we could create heaven on earth. Someone very powerful told us that. So agreement number one was be impeccable with our word, simply meaning... My word is the power to create, so I want to pay attention to what I'm creating, what I'm speaking into being. Agreement number two is don't take anything personally. I'll pause while we all take a deep breath on that. <laughs> don't take anything personally. Remember the Hopi writing says, take nothing personally, least of all yourself. It goes on to say because when you do your spiritual work comes to a halt. So we don't want to take anything personally. The Apostle Paul said it this way, I've learned in whatsoever state I'm in, Arizona, Colorado, no, go ahead. no, he said, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. You know, the idea is find your blessings here in this moment. Don't get caught up in the past or caught up in the future. Find the blessings in this moment. In this moment, we are warm. We're sitting in an atmosphere of love. We have music. We have one another's goodwill and encouragement. The sun's shining. <coughs> in this moment, we are content. Third agreement was don't make assumptions. Again, I'll pause while we take a deep breath on that. Because humans can make assumptions about almost anything, make up stories, whether they're true or not, base major life decisions on assumptions that may or may not be true. So it's good to ask clarifying questions. You know, I, was, I grew up being told I asked too many questions. What a great day it was when I realized asking questions is a holy and sacred thing. <laughs> Be curious. Ask questions. Especially the clarifying questions. So 
so I can figure out, is this true? What is true in this moment? And now the last agreement, the fourth agreement. Anybody know what it is? Always do your best. Sounds like something that you would put on the kindergarten schoolroom wall, doesn't it? Well, as a matter of fact, I had lunch last week at the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, Dr. Tracy Bailey and some of her colleagues and uh, some other ministers hearing about the good work that the Boys and Girls Club is doing. By the way, Dr. Bailey will be our speaker in a few Sundays, December 12th. On the wall, I actually saw written, do your best. It doesn't say do better than everyone else. It doesn't say we're running a contest to see who wins. It simply says do your best. Do your best. It's similar to Unity's principle number five. Through thoughts, words, and actions, we live the truth we know. We do our best. And this writer suggests that when we do our best, then there's no guilt or self-blame or regrets. So I want to tell you a story about a healing that happened in our old sanctuary over at the old building. And, you know, when you and I, holding consciousness, healing for someone else, we know that the healing energy impacts us as well. The healer is not exempt, or the one doing the healing work is not exempt from opening to healing themselves. And Pam and I have a, a, a relative in our family whose son was diagnosed with some, uh, several different hard diagnoses. And at one point, they were told he'll, he'll probably never leave home or go to college or be able to live on his own or you know, manage life that well. And, and then at one point, uh, he was suicidal, and he was on suicidal watch for about a year and a half. We had a healing service up at the old building. There was a circle of about 12, 15 of us. Uh, I'm guessing some of you were there. It's the days of Susan Bowles and Olivia Rose. Um, so we were doing healing work, and Pam and I made an agreement that we were gonna hold this young man in our consciousness of prayer for the verdicts to be defied. And that was, let's see, he's about 24 now. This was when he was 16. Uh, has just, he's working on his doctorate in microbiology. <laughs> he lives in his own apartment uh, off campus and just was a groomsman at a friend's wedding. Now I want us to take a deep breath into this idea. It was a powerful healing circle that night, but something that made it so powerful was allowing ourselves to hold an image of this young man already in uh, the, the healing outcome and we saw him wearing a tuxedo, accepting an award for his research. He has a tuxedo, and I am absolutely certain that at some point we will watch either in person or by Zoom him receive an award for his research. I know it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And it's the evidence of things not yet fully manifest. The power of our imagination to hold a vision uh, that, that is a part of the healing outcome, that is a gift to the person that you're holding in prayer, and it's a gift for you to know that you're participating in the unfolding of someone's good. If we do our best, 
then we're asked to do our best again. And we're asked to do our best over and over and over and over again. Until we become a master of transformation. Remember the toll texts teach that we are training to be masters of transforming hell into heaven. Or we might say transforming fear into peace or transforming hate into love. We are asked to be transformers. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're bringing heaven consciousness to this experience. Years ago, uh, at the healing center that I was a part of in North Florida, I had an experience with Mother Mary, which some of you have heard me talk about, some of those experiences, uh, because they were always shocking to me because I wasn't Catholic. But me, she wasn't Catholic either, so <laughs> the, it just... <laughs> but the idea is this. She said to me, you're a transformer. And it was given to me in the image, you know, of the electrical power uh, coming through the electrical system and the grid. And it has to be transformed into a current that you and I can receive into our homes. So that's a powerful image to see ourselves as transformers. We don't have to look very far for examples of the world trying to scare the out of us right we don't have to look very far for someone or some report to tell us of how bad it is and how bad it's going to be we are invited especially today when we're talking about hope and faith to transform that kind of energy transform it into a heaven kind of energy yes hard things happen Yes, we are asked to manage many events and circumstances in the world at all times. The way we hold them in our consciousness, are we speaking grace over them or are we speaking fear over them? And we better stay alert. One of the scriptures in the Advent booklet from Unity this year from Corinthians, it says, keep alert Stand firm in your faith. Be courageous and be strong. And I want to add, or else. (laughs) Keep alert. Stand firm in your faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Because if we're not, what happens? Something else takes over. So do I want to be a transformer for creating the heaven consciousness or something else? Am I speaking grace over an event? an idea, something that might happen? Am I speaking grace or am I speaking something else? That's the question for the day. So here's what I'm pondering starting today, first day of Advent. What if Advent is a ritual of remembrance? And I'm not talking about remembering all the other Advents we've had in our lives. What if it's a ritual of remembrance? What might we be remembering as individuals or as a species? Who we truly are. Who we truly are. Remember that we are on a journey of mastership training. Many refer to Jesus as a master. There are many people known as masters in the world. And if Jesus said we can do all the things he did and greater, then we are in a mastership training as well. This human journey is a journey of awakening. And this Advent, I invite you to ponder the idea that we're masters in training, or if that word is uncomfortable, that we are called to be transformers. That we're called to transform hell consciousness into heaven consciousness. And we're asked to do it over and over and over pretty much nonstop without ceasing. And 
one last scripture for today in the book of Colossians. We hear this phrase, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Glory is another word for light. Christ in you, the consciousness in you, the awakening consciousness in all of us in our species, that this consciousness, known in our arena, this unity arena, as the consciousness of Christ, Christ in you, that consciousness in you is the hope of glory. And who would that hope be for? all of us, our species, Christ in you. See, can, we can't do it without you. We can't do it without one another. It's like those races we see when these incredible uh, athletes, someone falls on the field and the other athlete turns to help them up and they run in together without thought of who's going to win the race. That's the way it is with this awakening. Christ in you is all of our hope of the light expanding so much that hell consciousness cannot live in us or our species. Just an idea. <laughs> Just a thought. So I invite you to take a deep breath. And think right now about a place in your own life where you are calling for grace and for the expansion of the hope, expansion of the faith. Or imagine, if you will, someone you're holding in prayer, a friend, a loved one, a family member. saying grace over them. The Christ in them expands because it's the hope of glory for all of us. Today we see the light expanding because we've said yes to expanding our hope and our faith. We've said yes to being transformers, transforming hell consciousness into heaven consciousness, meaning the consciousness of love, of compassion, of forgiveness, of understanding, and here's the hitch, the trust to keep beginning again without ceasing to continue to say yes to being a transformer. And we say so it is and so we let it be. Namaste. And amen. Thank you, Reverend Margaret. So I, I wrote down two things for, well, I was going to say for us to remember, but for me to remember that we that I can light a candle of hope and faith in my heart and that I am a transformer of my world, which means that you are the transformer for your world. Which means that we are all the transformers and we transform everything that the public is going out into the world. We help each other to do that. There you have it. Thank you so much, Reverend Margaret. We we appreciate you. We truly do. Let's see. Do you want to say a little blessing for our thank you? I forgot to ask earlier. <laughs> so I'm going to thank Re Reverend Gervais for coming up and giving the blessing for our offering. I try not to assume. <laughs> uh, well, it's a, a wonderful message. Thank you so much, Margaret. And a great season we are embarking upon. 
the season of uh, celebration of Christmas. And so let's take our tithes and offerings and hold them in our hand and get ready to do a blessing of them. Because as we bless those things that we have, more comes into our life's experience. So thank you, God, for the abundant blessings that flow into our lives day by day, moment by moment, and that are now flowing into this ministry. And so it is. Amen. 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 Thank you. And while we're doing the offering, let's hear our wonderful band, Hand in My Pocket. <laughs> Hand it over. <laughs>
that's going to help it, you know, let's gather out there and get the material out of the barn and bring it around and set it up. And anybody else that wants to help me can come help me. All right, let's uh, say what I'll give our blessing to this offering because as we bless it and see it doing its perfect work, then we know that unity is blessed and many people are blessed. And we are all transformers of that a perfect message into a message that we can understand. Sometimes it's action uh, in, in the world and action here at Unity. So we see these, these gifts and tithes and offerings uh, moving throughout this ministry, doing its perfect work, and then returning to each giver. And because you give in joy, it flows back to you, multiplied. So it comes back heaped up, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Thank you, God. Amen. So it is. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Trevay. And um, we've got a word from our generosity. Oh, yes. Thank so Mr. Bob Shipman is going to bring us a word from our generosity team before we have our announcements and our closing. So thank you, Mr. Bob. We appreciate you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm wearing uh, maize and blue today. <laughs> I, I was born and raised in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and they were able, the University of Michigan was able to beat Ohio State for the first time in 10 years. Oh. Yesterday. I'm pretty happy about that. Hopefully all of you received uh, a letter from Unity. And the winner is... And the winner is... <laughs> and it contains uh, a form where you can express your intention for giving for the year 2022. Uh, we're coming into December, uh, lightning speed, and uh, we'll be starting working on the budget very shortly. So if you haven't sent one of these in yet, please do so. And if you didn't get one, there's a stack of them back on the table. So I'd encourage you to do that. And I thank you. And just one more plug. Um, I'm still looking for volunteers to help with parking next Saturday. And uh, if you're so inclined, um, that would be very helpful if you would come up to me after service or uh, let anyone know that uh, you're interested in helping us on that day. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Well, since you mentioned Michigan, then I guess I have to mention the Gators. <laughs> This is why how we know miracles happen, because they beat FSU. <laughs> okay, so speaking of what's happening Saturday, for which Bob needs help with the parking, it's our circulation day. This is the first time we've done this here at Unity. It's an idea that comes from one of our Unity Prosperity teachers, Reverend Jim Rosemurgy. So this Saturday, we, from 10 to 2, will have vendors out here in the front lawn under that tent. It's going to be put up soon. Uh, selling their arts and crafts. We'll have music. Some of our Unity Band will be here doing music. We'll have a food truck. We'll have a bake sale. Many of us are donating for the bake sale. We're donating plants for a plant sale. So all those things are for sale. But at 11 a.m., what happens? Open the, door. the barn the door. opens. And we are giving of our goods, circulating of our abundance into the community. So it's a reverse yard sale. There won't be any money exchanged for what's in the barn. Uh, it will be freely given with our blessings of abundance to the community. And uh, we will have out the donation jar, of course, because people are already asking, well, can't we donate anything? Well, of course. 
So if you want to donate plants for sale, baked goods for sale, if you want to be a vendor, see Joanne Burns. Joanne, are you there you are. See Joanne if you want to be a vendor. And these flyers about the event are back there on the table. Please come and participate. I'm looking forward to it. A lot of us will be here helping. Your help and participation is so um, important. Next Sunday, I'll be your speaker. How about work day on Tuesday? Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Work day on Tuesday here to prepare for the event. Uh, many of us will be out here much earlier than 10, but officially 10 to 1 Tuesday to help put some things together out here and finish organizing the barn and get ready for next Saturday. There's so, a meeting, isn't there, too? And a meeting after that. And a meeting mm -hmm. after that. So Tuesday, 10 to 1, work day, and meeting after that. Okay. Uh, back here is our prayer request box if you want to put in a prayer request to our prayer team. Want to remind you, uh, how many of you here did the Reading Buddies work with the elementary school up until COVID hit? Okay, good, yes. I know several of us were doing the Reading Buddies with the elementary school. Well, we can be reading tutors again. We have a request from the Boys and Girls Club. It's through the Freedom Readers that Dr. Bailey established. These are the guidelines for being a tutor. They ask for one day a week for one hour. And it's for readers, uh, tutors for, uh, it's help with all grades, but especially uh, second graders learning to read. Because we know the statistics, if they don't learn to read by third grade, uh, it's gonna be hard for the, it, that's the, what the statistics show anyway. So if you wanna be a reading tutor, these sheets are on the back table with also the needs of our outreach group and Darylin is going to tell us about uh, our annual tags for the kids. Okay. Good morning everybody. How are you doing? We don't have our tree but we still have tags. Okay. As you know every year probably at least for the last four or five years now we've adopted a kid from Helpful Kids and to make their Christmas better, brighter, so forth and so on, and they might not otherwise get it. So I'm gonna leave these on a back table over there. If we need more, we can get more. Two things, one, they'd like to have everything back by the 17th, if you can. If you can take it over there, fine. If not, we'll collect it here, and we'll take it over there. So all your help and support is appreciated in terms of making these kids, which are mostly little children still, you know? I mean, little kids, uh, aged four, five, nine, to make their day a happier day because sometimes they're not going to be getting anything else from their family because they just can't afford it. So, okay, so do we wrap the gifts? No, don't, don't wrap the gifts. Don't wrap the gifts. Well, you know, the thing is they haven't asked for toys in a while. And so if it's shirts and pants and this and that, I would wrap the gift and put the tag on the gift that you're doing it so that each child indeed who you designated it for gets that gift. Okay. Okay, I'm confused. We do wrap the gifts or we don't wrap the gifts? Unless it's a bike. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's wrap it unless it's a bike. Okay. And put the tag on. And put the tag on. Okay. 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 Great. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, Darylin is on our board of directors and she is the head of our community outreach team and she's stellar at doing this. Um, so the, the tags are on the table for the gifts, for the help for kids, and we want to have them back here or over there at Help for Kids by, by December 17th. Yeah. Okay. And no any, question. Yes. Do the, do the tags tell us the Yes, they tell you the gender, the age, and the size. Perfect question. Gender, age, and size will be on those tags. Yes, ma'am. Where is the reading? Oh, it's at the Boys and Girls Club, which is over off of Joe White Avenue on Dunbar Street. And it's a wonderful new building that they have. You got an address? Yes. 1000 Dunbar Street. On top of it, it's from 315 to 415 only. Okay. Yeah, the one hour, one day a week, one hour a week, and it's 315 to 415 for that hour. Because all the kids are there at the same time. They come there after school. So it's 1000 Dunbar Street. But all of that is on this sheet back here on the table. It's a wonderful new building. 
And I don't, you know, I'm not from Myrtle Beach, but I learned that the, the wonderful new gym they have and a lot of the building was paid for by a local uh, Myrtle Beach athlete, Ramon Sessions. You all know him? Yeah. So it's a wonderful facility. Any other announcements before we close for the day? Okay, we're, we're going to do our last prayer. It's the updated uh, unity prayer inspired by James Dillett Freeman's prayer, and it's on your prayer card. So we say this for ourselves, for all those we're holding in our hearts, and for our world. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The presence of love enfolds us. The power of peace protects us. And the one presence that lives within all creation enlivens us. Wherever we are, love is, peace is, light is, God is, and all is well. And that's the truth. We're going to stand for our peace song. And it's a wrap after that, right? <laughs> and I hope everybody will come out for next Saturday, December 1st.